Welcome to another episode of the Knowledge Show powered by Knowledge My name is Ahmed Zaman, and I will be moderating today's session for you. For everyone who is new to the show, at the Knowledge Show, we invite leaders from across the globe to talk on matters related to talent, people, technology, and life in general. Right. And discussion in today's episode will be around the topic of culture of empowerment. And without further ado, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you our guests. And our special guest for today's show is Shivin Tiku. Shivin heads the organization effectiveness portfolio, which includes org, org development, talent management, capability building, and internal communications for the automotive and tractor business at Mahindra and Mahindra. He has been instrumental in setting up the OD practice within Mahindra, leading several large scale change interventions like brand transformation rise, employee value proposition, auto and farm passion, quality transformation and simplicity. His interests include diversity and inclusion, rewards and recognition, employee engagement, organization structure and culture diagnostics. Shivin has been recognized with the Emerging OD Practitioner Award 2021 by OD Network, being the first Indian to be conferred with this prestigious recognition. Further, he has been recognized as future HR leader. Are you in the list by People Matters, selected as top 21 leaders among 1,200 aspirants? What a profile there, Shivin. And Thank you for joining us uh, for this show. Thank you. Thank you, Emma, for having me. Thank you uh, for inviting. Thank you. Along with Shivan, we have with us Manu Nanda. At the helm of Nolscape's India and APAC business is Manu Nanda, Senior Vice President and Chief Business Officer. He's a self-initiator and he thrives on chasing audacious business goals. His expertise lies in creating value for customers, helping organizations with their talent transformation efforts across levels and delivering high business results. A seasoned enterprise leader with 25 plus years of diverse corporate experience across FMCG, petroleum, retail, automotives, oil and gas, and training and coaching, Manu has held leadership roles across channel management, key accounts, franchisee operations, and consulting. Outside of work, Manu is a movie buff, an avid reader, and a compulsive swimmer. Thank you so much, Manu, for joining us once again for The Knowledge Show. Thank you, Amar. It's always a pleasure to be on your show. Thanks, Manu. So as we had discussed earlier, we will start with a little fun element, an icebreaker of sorts for both of you. I'm sure you must have at some point interacted earlier, but this will be the real icebreaker where our audience will also get a chance to know about you and your preferences in life. Yeah. So we'll, we'll start with you, Shivan. It's a would you rather segment and it's a rapid fire round. So you'll have to answer very quickly. The first sure. one for you, Shivan, is would you rather live without WhatsApp or without Netflix? Without Netflix. And, and why is that? Since all the business and personal lives depends on WhatsApp, so you cannot delete it. Even if you want to, you can't. That's true. That's true. Good answer, Shivan. Thank you. Uh, the next one for you, Shivan, again, is would you rather have a personal robot assistant or a self-driving car? A personal robot assistant because I love driving. So no point of getting us, you know, a self-driven car. So the first Very one. interesting. Very interesting. Third one, um, would you rather have the power to control time or the power to read minds? Since I'm a OD professional, power to read minds. Excellent, excellent. Uh, okay, the second last question for you, Shivan, is would you rather be known as an operations focused HR person or a people focused HR person? It's difficult to answer either one. 
I would say uh, operations focused, but with uh, intention to making change in the lives of people. So a bit of both. Very interesting, Shivan. Thank you. Last one for you, Shivan, in this round is: Would you rather eliminate all people-related conflicts or technology-related issues? All people-related conflicts, because technology can be solved. Your chat GPT can even give you quotes, but you cannot have chat GPT to solve people-related conflicts. Right. Very excellent and very interesting uh, answers there, Shivan. Great so, answer. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Putting me under pressure now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it, it is feeling like uh, the rapid fire of a popular coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and we also have like a virtual uh, hamper and voucher to share with the winner as well, right? So, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure Manu would be under pressure, although he is a veteran uh, on this show. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. So, Manu, we'll start with you now. Your first question is, would you rather have an AI system that can accurately predict stock market trends or an AI system that can detect future health concerns? I think I would go for the later. Health concerns is more important to make you know, work, the world a better living uh, place, uh, stock markets, money comes and goes. So that's irrelevant. I think it's the health, which is more important. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, we move to the next question. Uh, would you rather win the Oscar or the Nobel Prize? Uh, interesting. I would wish I can take a bit of both. But yes, since I need to make one choice, I think uh, Nobel Prize, nothing can beat because it's at the highest level the kind of recognition and also to achieve that level, there's a lot of work that needs to go into, you know, there. So would love to be in that path if it takes me there. Absolutely. And and which discipline would you want this in? If I think this goes without saying. Nice, nice. Okay. The next one for you, Manu, is would you rather exchange lives with Joe Biden or Elon Musk? Elon Musk, I think more more interesting, more charismatic, more innovative. I would uh, you know go for that because it's a company which is doing wonders. Tesla is one of the most innovative companies right now, and heading a company as innovative as Tesla, I think uh, is the right place to be in. I'm sure you must be looking forward to Tesla coming to India with it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Awesome. A second last question for you, Manu. Uh, would you rather have a boring life with comfort or an adventurous life with uncertainties? Adventurous time, I would say, because even if it's a boring life, life is always uncertain. You know, what what path it takes the next day, nobody knows. So it's always good to be on the fun track, the adventurous path, and encounter whatever comes in the right way. Excellent, excellent. And I think the beauty is in the unpredictable nature of life. And absolutely, absolutely. Great, great. Last one for you, Manu. And you, you've been very good so far. Let's see. Um, would you rather have a sponsored business trip to all of your favorite destinations or a paid leave for six months? I would take the first one. I think the sponsored to my favorite destination because that's part of my wish list, my bucket list. To visit, you know, some places which you know I've always been fascinated by. So I think I'll pick the first one. Goes without saying. Wonderful. I think it's a tough, tough task for me to decide the winner of that round right now. But I'm sure once we post this on social media and we have the comments coming in, we'll have a definite winner for this one. Thank you both for being such a Thank support you. and uh, coming up with such excellent and interesting uh, answers. And with that, we will move now to the more uh, serious uh, interaction, which is on our topic for today, and uh, that is uh, culture of empowerment, right? So, Shivan, I would like to again uh, start with you and your perspective. What, what does culture of empowerment mean to you personally? So thank you, um, Amel, for this question. And uh, again, my formal thanks to Nolscape team for having me over the show. A disclaimer before I start is the views that I express are my or are that of my own and not representative of the organization. 
if you look at the organization context empowerment essentially looks at a process by which you have your employees or individuals who get accountability responsibility and resources for taking in the decisions or taking certain actions if i were to just simply look my definition is looking at two aspects and this is what we realize through deep research first is that what we call hard aspects or the structural part of empowerment whether it's aspects like delegation of authority access to resources and reporting structures or uh, you know decision making frameworks we are aware of rasic obis so that constitutes the first part the second and the most difficult is the softer aspect what we know as the psychological aspect uh, we know about trust psychological safety sense of ownership these are which are not measurable but then it is felt as part of the larger culture more importantly my definition for empowerment is twofold from an organization lens and from that of an individual lens from an organization lens it is about creating the right ecosystem the environment in which individuals can thrive they can truly realize their potential can create decisions which impact the larger ecosystem and for an employee or an individual it is what is the difference that i make to the organization and to the larger vision and the purpose of the company so that to me is a nutshell for the definition of how i look at empowerment great manu would you like to add to that and also present your perspective on the entire concept of empowerment per se absolutely i think great points by shivan because you know that sets the foundation for our uh, you know the discussion that we're going to have in the next one hour or so so i'll take empowerment in a very different way because maybe coming from the traditional part of maybe my gray hair and years of experience where at one point everything was centered only with a few people in an organization and you know that was where the power center was where nothing would go down and you know the entire organization would get controlled by that so for me a culture of empowerment is you know all about enabling people enabling uh, employees to take their own decisions uh giving them a sense of flexibility in terms of making better choices which they feel is right at the same time creating a sense of opportunities for them to express and to come out with what is there in their mind empowerment is you know not micromanaging but giving them some kind of freedom to do what they want to do but at the same time holding them accountable for their decisions so empowerment does not mean that hey you know you do anything and it's a free run it's about expressing yourself it's about taking those opportunities but at the same time being held very strongly accountable uh, you know for everything that you do so that is moving from what was there in the past to where i now see a lot of organization you know setting that pace for a culture of empowerment wonderful Uh, as a very popular quote goes with great power comes great responsibility and i think it greatly aligns with your perspective uh, manu the next question again uh, manu if you can extend your thoughts there as well right and especially with your experience in you know servicing clients of a huge spectrum right can you provide certain instances or specific initiatives or practices that have successfully fostered the culture of empowerment i think they'll you know so again being on this side of the table when you're servicing clients i think uh, and shivan maybe you would see that because you know as part of your work you would be needing lot of partners coming to you so you know the advantage we get is that we get to go to various organizations various sectors and understand what's happening where then you know in terms of my experience uh, something that stands out very strongly as a practice where the culture of empowerment actually starts is by delegation the delegation is something which is very very important and you know for leaders who have had the concept or have had the opportunity to delegate that has been the trigger for that particular team or for that particular organization to set the culture of empowerment also what i mentioned earlier in terms of uh, you know getting away from the mode of micromanagement i think that's the biggest killer 
if you're micromanaging on a day-to-day basis and monitoring what's happening day in and day out, uh, you know, it is it goes against the principles of setting up a culture of empowerment. And the third thing what we hear very often from organizations and you know in terms of the experiences is also the ability to have uh, constant communication channels open where there is a um, method of giving and receiving feedback. If that is set in practice, uh, I think that sets the pace for the culture of empowerment to be absolutely uh, brilliant in any organization. Thanks, Manu. Uh, great, great examples there. Shivan, would you have any instances that you would want to share of, of specific initiatives or programs that actually led to the empowerment of the workforce or the leaders? Sure. I think Manu did answer about specific philosophies and instances. So thanks for that. I would bring in the best practices just to complement the uh, discussion. Three specific practices which come to my mind are and this is in no order, but one is on experiences, the second is on platforms, and third is on policies. So the first on experience, uh, I'm recalling a popular uh, terminology called Moments of Truth by Jan Carlson. Uh, As you know, he was part of the Scandinavian Airlines responsible for the turnaround. And what he observed is that there are certain critical instances during the life journey of a customer which are make or break. And if you really address those and make it into a happy and delightful moments, then you would really convert the customer and leading to a better you know, satisfaction and NPS scores. Moments of truth as a concept, if you see, is widely acknowledged in various industries, whether it's airlines, hospitality, banking, insurance. So it has a larger application. So that's on the experience side. The second is on the platforms. A lot of corporates and conglomerates typically have a young CFT. Uh, when I mean young, young managers who come as part of a cross-functional team. The idea is that this young talent team is empowered to critique the decisions of the leadership team. Uh, they can challenge the current status quo, come up with a lot of transformative ideas. And uh, over the years, they have led to several org-wide initiatives our acquisition of certain key entities, MNAs. In a way, they have really catapulted a lot of our businesses. And that's an interesting concept. Again, the focus is consistency of how you follow the seriousness and how are these, how are the leaders supporting this young CFT? Because they are inexperienced, but they can come with a lot of out of box ideas. The third to me is about policies rather the philosophy of empowerment converting into specific HR policies. So for instance, having a group-wide IJP portal, which is uh, internal job posting and giving empowerment to folks to apply to the role. So even if a person A is not in the function, but thinks that she or he has the capability of applying, so not having any restrictions. And similarly, you can extend the concept to something like learning, where uh, all the learning programs are available at the click of a button, and you give a freedom of choice to the employee to really select the course. So translation of empowerment and freedom of choosing in terms of specific HR policies and practices. Awesome. I think those were very interesting uh, anecdotes and examples that you shared, Shivan. For my next question, I would want to focus on an area which might be of uh, uh, great importance for uh, decision makers like yourself, right? And it is about the measurement of the effectiveness of such programs, especially when you are measuring something like empowerment. And that too, holistically, the culture of empowerment within the organization, how do you measure such things? So as I mentioned, for me, there are hard aspects, for example, delegation of authority. So if a level X has been empowered to take a decision, how many times uh, the person has taken the decision and how many times are there violations? That is easier to measure. But what is not easier to measure is the soft aspects. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the same person X has been empowered to make this call but he or she goes to his manager 
asking for an informal validation now there are two aspects to it one is the ability of the leader to say no to the person and the second is that even if the person x has been empowered the capability of the person to actually take the decision now this is an interesting conflict or interesting trade off now from an organization context we do have examples like employee engagement pulse surveys which measures specific empowerment questions but for me the greater conflict which i said is even if the person x has been empowered is the person really taking it is the person having the right knowledge information and capability to take the decision and is she or he being supported by the leader that is the true measurement for empowerment amazing i like how you break down every question into more simpler formats and make it very easily understandable for the audience so great chivin uh, manu would you like to add anything to what chivin said in terms of measurement of uh, culture yeah so great points again by shivan i think he's covered the uh, crux of you know your question just to add to what shivan has said is you know again you know again even i'll try to do what shivan did maybe drive divide it into the tangible and the intangible so if you see employee behavior attitudes responses you know they come into the realm of the intangible you can actually not measure employee behavior or you cannot measure attitude to a large extent but i think some of the metrics which can actually help you understand whether specifically you're looking at you know the culture of empowerment is only through some of the things that uh, shivan has already spoken of whether it's the pulse surveys or your employee engagement scores that come out or uh, also looking at your attrition rate you know so when there is an attrition if the organization as a policy of exit interview or trying to understand where they stand on their flexibility trying to take feedback from time to time in terms of whether they felt empowered in taking decisions you know so putting a matrix around that and the other critical thing i would say uh, in this entire list would be uh, the business outcomes you know so you know if someone has been empowered to take decision what was the outcome in terms of the business what is it that uh got measured in terms of the pre to the post in terms of how the business metrics moved uh, and if you combine all this together maybe you can put some metrics in terms of understanding if your culture of empowerment or that flexibility is working well or not in the within the organization wonderful very interesting uh, thoughts there manu i will post my next question to shivan and it is regarding the sustenance of culture of empowerment and why i say this is because employees at all level whether it's uh, at the entry level position or the senior leadership roles need to feel empowered and as such what strategies can organizations use to develop and empower managers and leaders to effectively support and also sort of cascade that culture of empowerment across the organization we don't have easy answers for this but i can propose a three steps to it the first is having the right role models as leaders i'm reminded of a story by in power of habits by charles duick which is on alcoha and the ceo was paul neil so the story so goes that there was an issue with workmen safety and in a mind setup workmen safety was easily compromised but with the new ceo coming he ensured that the minds would remain closed till the time the operations team take workman safety very seriously in fact he went ahead and replaced the site head with the new operations person and they in turn set a culture of workman safety so right from communication in the local languages the last mile workman raising an alarm for the safety in the mines and this simple keystone behavior led to a transformation so having the right leaders in terms of the role models who can advocate empowerment who can advocate the key philosophy of your organization that's the first second especially for large setups having clearly defined decision making frameworks and who can take that decision especially when it's large and a cross functional team 
A very simple example you would see, and this is lot to do in manufacturing and automobile industries, that the last mile workman is empowered to stop the line. She or he is clear that if there is an issue with the production, if there is an issue compromising the quality, she or he can raise the alarm or even stop the production line. So having a very clear set decision making frameworks. This follow up, of course, is having the right structure and the skills as well. The third aspect is reinforcing this expectation, which becomes a culture. As I said in the earlier example, Paul O'Neill kept on reinforcing the concept or the philosophy of workmen safety till the time the message was home for the operations head and cascaded to the larger audience in the organization. So these three would be my approach. Very interesting uh, thoughts there, Shivan. Manu, how do you think an organization can approach sustaining and cascading a culture of empowerment? It's not a straight answer, uh, Emma, to be honest. Mm. I think, uh, you know, the first step in terms of cascading and creating that culture of empowerment and ensuring it's not just a one-off strategic move, but it's something that stays and builds on over a period of time is by ensuring, and that is something a lot of organizations are talking about, is moving towards a growth mindset, you know. So that is one very, very important moving away from your rigidity to stick to what worked well earlier, but versus where, you know, you're looking at, you know, the, the future of workforce, the future of workplace in terms of how things need to change. That is one. Second is absolutely clarifying, you know, the vision and the roles of individuals, clarifying the vision of the organization, clarifying the goals of the organizations in terms of what's long term, what's short term, so that the employees are absolutely aware of, you know, what is the direction that they need to take. So that is second. And the third and the most critical thing would be uh, also getting into a constant mechanism of uh, uh, learning and a feedback culture. So in terms of how the progress is happening. So if your lines of communication, your lines of feedback, your lines of actually doing a dipstick and saying that, hey, this is where we started. These are the decisions that we have taken. Uh, this is how we have empowered people to take decisions. And the people who have been empowered, are they going in the right direction? Uh, is somewhere that, you know, the sense of ownership would come in, a sense of belongingness would come in and would set the culture of empowerment uh, for it to stay over a period of long time. Great uh, best practices uh, shared there, uh, Manu. Thank you so much for that. And next, I would again come to you, Manu, only because uh, I'm sure with you being the expert in the area of culture transformation and, you know, Northscape bringing that expertise as well and being approached by different organizations uh, with different sort of challenges and resistance also internally when they approach and such kind of interventions or programs when they want to initiate a, a culture of empowerment. What kind of challenges are these, essentially? It's very interesting. When I mean, that's the flip side of empowerment. When everyone is empowered, you know, what I've heard or learned that your decision-making process slows down. I don't know, Shivan, whether you would agree to this or not. Because everyone takes their own time to come back and everyone feels empowered. You know, so there is no commonality or not possible for everyone to come down on a common platform and say, hey, well, I feel like this. So, for example, Amar, you, you have a different perspective uh, to conclude and say that, hey, what is the direction that you need to take? So that is something which, uh, you know, in terms of my experience and conversations across different organizations, uh, you know, I've heard. The second part is also people who get empowered it's good to do that. But if they lack experience, if they do not have the right kind of coaching available, the right kind of mentors available as part of their progress, uh, you know, there is always some kind of risk possible. While with empowerment, as I shared earlier, comes a lot of accountability. If uh, the empowerment is not happening to the right person and is not caught at the right time, 
before you suddenly realize that hey this has led to a, a disaster uh, that is one of the biggest risks which people have spoken about so i would pick up these two immediately uh, so delayed decision making and of course uh, lack of experience in a certain set of people which can is off balance everything very very interesting pointers there manu shivan would you like to add something in terms of what other challenges you might probably be facing in terms of you know having that culture of empowerment within the organization sure so before i come to that just responding to manu's point you know typically where there is a lot of consensus based decisions you would see that you would have a feeling of empowerment but then there is no closure happening and that's where uh, you know the challenge with empowerment and empowering everybody comes to point so my set of three challenges is first is a lot of times you have skepticism around any new change management if there have been previous attempts on empowerment or around similar themes the challenge is that the employees may think of it as yet another initiative or the flavor of the month so how do you ensure that it is consistent and it is just not a flash in the oven that's first the second for me would be and manu previously alluded to this point is not only explaining the how of empowerment for example you have doa you have decision making framework but also explaining the why of the empowerment why so, are we wanting to become faster or agile faster decision making because we want to give a better customer experience because we want to tackle the competition because we want to improve the brand perception so combining the why and the how most of the times either we focus on one of them but not both of them together third which is similar to manu's point is fear of punitive action or psychological safety a person x may take a decision but then if later there are the peers or the manager who would come and not respect the decision whether it's for lack for experience or maybe because the person has not aligned and again it depends what kind of culture it is the person may fear of taking the decision and would want to spend more time on consensus and alignment and not taking the decision itself so these are the three challenges for me so shivan two keywords that i would like to take from what you said one is skepticism and the other was of course fear right so that also makes trust a very important factor in the overall exercise of empowerment right how do you build and approach building and maintaining trust within an organization shivan if you can sure so the quick uh, glance a reference is speed of trust by steven kobe that's one of the best books which i have read on trust uh, he says simply strategy into execution is results he just adds strategy into execution into trust he says trust is the hidden variable which we don't see is the results so the speed and cost of business delivery is trust now there are enough uh, literature research available on the role of trust from a concept of empowerment we and i have been discussing about psychological safety uh, encouraging your team to take risk uh, take decisions and not be afraid of taking challenges and it which will lead to innovation which will lead to better results what's more important is how to build trust you would have enough literature on this but one of the best examples which i love to see a lot of documentaries is that of army especially the commandos uh, whether it's the marcos or the seal six when you are trusting your life in somebody else's hands so what a better example than of commando troops especially when they are going to critical assignments and you know how critical it is to trust each other in such situations so studying such examples would be something of lot of interest for our audience as well wonderful wonderful take there shivan manu would you like to add something on trust and how it can be built yeah absolutely amar i think uh, i think great example shivan on uh, 
army i think nothing can be bigger and better in terms of the trust because end of the day you know it's there it is live action and interesting your life on the other person's decisions i think trust is a you know the first step in terms of as part of our discussion on uh, you know creating that culture of empowerment because if you have trust organizations will grow if you have trust it will give the employees the benefit of thriving in a very open culture where they can communicate they can share ideas and they can be absolutely open in terms of how they feel uh in terms of some of the tools that you can use to build that kind of trust is uh, something uh, again based on my experience again uh you know what i've heard learned is uh, uh giving creating a sense of security for the employees and that can happen by uh, looking at uh, forgiving mistakes uh, so if there is a sense of security a sense of uh, risk taking ability and you know there is a manager who is ready to coach and forgive mistakes as long as it's not too drastic and absolutely way off in terms of the realms of the organization or beyond the policies and all that is one way second is uh, also enabling the employees to uh, uh, raise concerns wherever they have anything that is not working well so if you have that freedom if you have that ability to communicate and again go and say that hey there is a concern here and how is it that you know this thing can be solved solved whether it's possible or not possible i think that element of trust automatically comes in and the third and the most critical uh, part is also about uh, you know the ability to collaborate with your team members the ability to come together to uh, something that you mentioned uh, uh, shivan on a consensus coming together if end of the day because you are working with people you are working with uh, humans who are uh, creatures of emotions uh, they are not creatures of logic uh, so it's emotions coming into play if there is a camaraderie there is collaboration happening uh, within the team within the organization i think the factor of trust always is always going to be on a high very very interesting thoughts again manu there and uh, for the next question i would like to come to you manu purely because you have been emphasizing the correlation between empowerment and uh, accountability right so how can someone balance the need for structure and guidelines with the desire to empower employees and make independent decisions sure again uh, you know it's it's a delicate balance between the two i would say amar i think it is all about uh, assessing and adopting as you move along the path of uh, creating a balance between uh, the thin structures that are there uh, and part of the empowerment uh, culture building it is also about uh, you know providing autonomy to the people to understand what is possible what is not possible uh, very very critical for them to understand uh, you know and clear have clear cut communication and expectation setting across so that people who are empowered uh, actually get to understand you know where is it that what are the boundaries of taking those decisions or what are the boundaries where you know it's it's a hard stop and that comes with accountability towards the end of the day uh, so these three i would say are the critical elements to balance the two great even you would you like to add anything to the entire balancing of structure and guidelines with the desire for empowerment so so totally agreeing with manu and i just wanted to give an illustrative example to qualify as i said that for hard aspects uh, especially for cross functional decisions typically organizations have a rasic uh, say an example of hiring a candidate now the line manager can decide functional competence the business hr can decide culture fit the salary negotiation the finance person can probably decide the budget and what would be the manpower cost the key question is in case of conflict who takes the final accountability who who takes the final decision of a go or a no go for the candidate now this is so crucial as a decision so my take is that you can have very elaborate detailed decision making frameworks but unless it's backed by the right structure it's backed by the right people and the right skills and backed by the right the culture and the environment i'm saying in a broad term unless you don't have these three 
to really stitch up this entire framework the framework by itself is of no use again very interesting thoughts there and something that audience will find great value in and with that uh, we come to the last question and it specifically in my list uh, because both of you are uh, masters in the area of learning and development so starting with you shivan how do you think learning and development opportunities strengthen the culture of empowerment so two clear aspects which i can think is one in terms of the hard aspects often decision making is cross functional now the person taking the decision needs to understand what are the trade offs she or he is making getting alignment and consensus we talk about understanding everyone's perspective before making the decision now these are key skills or key hard skills and to get all of them together there is aspect of learning and training the second area which is more i mentioned about the softer aspects which is building trust building empathy building psychological safety again these are something which combination of your learning role modeling as well as feedback is something which a person or a leader gains over the years of experience so both hard aspect and soft aspect requires and learning plays a very critical role in developing a leader very objectively put there shivan thank you so much manu your take on this yeah quite similar i would say amar i think uh, you know creating a culture of empowerment with learning coming at and is absolutely critical because you know learning turns out to be a big enabler for people who are walking the path or walking the talk in terms of getting empowered and getting into the path of taking their own decisions or uh, working closely with the leaders i think it is all about uh, you know helping them develop the right skills in terms of what needs to happen what is it that would work well for them it could be on uh, elements of something that shivan spoke up on you know the frameworks of decision making because empowerment is all about taking the right decision at the right time uh, it is about uh, critical thinking in terms of you know uh, what is it that you need to do when and what is your risk taking ability in terms of taking certain decisions and knowing knowing the pros and cons uh, the third part is also uh, a mentoring opportunities so when you are getting empowered what is it as part of your learning uh, uh, growth opportunities you can maybe work with some of your uh, work with a mentor to understand what's working well what's not working well if all these elements are available as part of your learning i think there's no way that you know the culture of empowerment the sustainment of it and ensuring that the organization the employee that particular department where you know you're part of are not in the right direction or are not on a path of growth goes uh, without saying very interesting so manu what i understand is not like a one off activity that can really define or absolutely uh, give, give direction so it has to be a combination of a lot of things coming together and more so i think the critical part is you start on a journey of uh, breeding that culture but are you able to sustain it for long wonderful i think uh, very interesting insights anecdotes and examples were shared by both manu and, and shivan thank you so much for that and i'm very confident that the audience will find this interaction this session very very useful and something that they can directly apply to their organizations as well so thanks a lot once again for that uh, interesting discussion manu and shivan but before we close this show and we conclude this uh, episode like i mentioned earlier we have another short uh, fun round with both of you before we say goodbye and it is two uh, truths and a lie format right so based on your experience uh, interacting with each other you must have formed some perception about each other's personalities right so this exercise is to test that perception so you have to tell two truth about yourself and a lie to shivan manu we'll start with you because you have had experience in in this game per se right so shivan will have to identify what is the lie that you're telling about yourself 
out of the three options. Okay, so you're saying two truths, two one truth and a lie. And, and a lie. Okay, one and lie. Shivan has to catch that lie. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So just give me a couple of seconds to think. I'm just. Gosh, uh, yes. Yeah, maybe I'll go with you know what I normally. Uh, uh, so okay. I can uh, fly a plane. I have jumped out of a plane. And the third one is that, uh, you know, I'm a university level swimmer. So since uh, you mentioned he is an avid swimmer, so I, third should be right. Second, uh, more likely to be right if he has tested uh, or done parachute jumping or some similar sport. So second and third is true, first is false. Okay, so Shivan is saying that you have never flown a plane. So essentially flying a plane is the lie. Manu, yeah. Manu. So, so that's the truth, uh, Shivan. I've flown for about 10 minutes on my own. So that was one of the highs of my life. I've never jumped out of a plane. Yes, that is part of my wish list to do skydiving maybe at some point. But yes, uh, and the third one is, as you rightly said, is also right. You were very close, Shivan. But okay. here is your chance to score a point if you are able to bluff Manu as well, right? You both are at the same points, right? So Shivan, your turn. Tell us two truths and a lie about yourself and Manu will have to identify the lie. You can take the first, state, the first statement is I love to cook as a hobby. The second is uh, I love to read a lot of books and uh, research articles. And third is uh, I love to meet a lot of people and uh, you know, interact with them a lot. Okay, so first one is love to cook, second is love to read, and third is love to meet people. Manu. So I hope my guess is right. Uh, I would say the first two are true. Third one may not be true. Shivan, Shivan to validate that. No, so I hate cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think second and third are more closer to what I am. Wow, super. Do, do you love to eat at least? Oh, I, I, I do love to eat a lot. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> okay, so both of you were able to bluff each other in this, in this round. And uh, great uh, talking to both of you, uh, Manu and Shivan, and getting those very interesting insights on the topical discussion as well. Thank you so much for joining us for this show. You both have a great day, and we'll keep you informed as and when uh, this uh, episode goes live. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amar, and thank you, Shivan. Pleasure interacting with you. Great discussion. Thank you, Amar, wonderful host. So, uh, pleasure was mine. Uh, and thank you, Manu, for having me here. Uh, it was fantastic to you know learn your experiences and your thoughts. So, fantastic show and fantastic learning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>